Hey everybody, John here and welcome back to the series, How to Use Toxic Biohazard. This is going to be video number 7 and we're going to be talking about the sequencer and the MIDI section. So first off, let's talk about the sequencer because this is probably one of the coolest parts of this synth itself. So let's pick a square way for this demonstration. So basically in a nutshell, what the sequencer is, is you, you can hold down a note and it will play through the different notes that you program in here. And you have a total of 64 different choices, as you can see here on the number of steps. So for simplistic, simplicity's sake, let's go down to four for now. Let's go down to four, and you'll see these first four notes here. And we'll turn this on by pressing the play button. So if we play something, we probably won't hear anything because it doesn't know what to do. So let's drag this up, and we'll go to zero. So what that's going to do is any note that you play is going to be that exact note that you play, which is zero. So let's say I want to go to the root note I play, and then we'll go up seven semitones. So we'll go up here and we'll program this to seven. So we can see that it jumps up seven there. Now let's say I want to hold this seven, and we'll go down to sus, which is sustain. So it's going to hold this note, or it's going to hold the seven note for this spot here. So it's a little bit longer. Now let's go down to maybe minus 12, so down an octave after that. And that's where you can make your sequence types of patterns. Now, <clears throat> now you can go up to 8 here, you can go up to 16, 12, 20, all the way up to 64 as before. So it can take a lot of time, but it's actually really cool. So that's kind of how that works. And we went through off all the way down with the three dots. It's going to be no effect. It's not going to play anything. Sus is going to play the previous one. And then you have minus 24. And then you, all the way at the top, you have plus 24. So we're at four octaves of range that you can play around with. So pretty handy. So a couple of stuff down here. Swing, this is basically going to change the groove or the rhythm of it a little bit. It holds the first note a little bit longer at the expense of the next note. So for example, here it would hold this root note a little bit longer before it gets into the seven. It's a subtle move, but it's it's kind of cool. So that's kind of what that button does right there. Dual is actually a pretty cool, uh, or we'll get to dual in a second, uh, ping pong I was talking about. It's kind of cool because it'll play this forwards and then it'll play it backwards again. Let's bring this back down to four here. So it's kind of an infinite loop. It plays it forwards and then it plays it backwards and it plays it forwards and it plays it backwards again. So it's kind of like doing uh, double the work for half the work in that sense. Uh, next up, uh, random is kind of, it'll. this kind of ignores the sequence it goes and it just plays it in a random order. So you don't really know it. Maybe it, um, according to the document documentation, it's more for like rhythmic type of things, which makes sense. And then dual, this is a really cool button here. It's probably one of the coolest ones here. So let's reset this back down to zero, for example. So what this dual does is it's essentially turning this 64 step sequencer into two sections of 32. So this first section here, think of it as it splits in the middle here, and these are now two independent sequences. So you can program the top one to maybe do like a lead line and then maybe the bottom to do a bass line. So for example, let's, uh, let's go up to like maybe 12, step in this octave here, 12, and then maybe, uh, I don't know, 18. Let's sustain that one. And then maybe let's go to 14. So it's just repeating this, right? Now since dual is on, now I have this section to maybe do some bass stuff. So if that's up 12, let's go down to zero to do an octave of that, 18. So it's going up with seven and sustain this and then maybe make this two. So now we can see that both things are doing the same thing or to make it even more apparent for like a baseline, let's go down to maybe minus 12. And let's, let's sustain this for this one. And then maybe sustain again. So hopefully you can kind of see how this is an independent uh, 
32 step sequencer as this one up here. And in that sense, you can get extremely creative with this type of section here. So that's what Dual does. It's a very cool feature as well. And then, like I said before, you can go all the way up to 64, which is quite a lot. And let's turn this off for now. And let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the MIDI section here. So this is not too complicated. Basically, in a nutshell, this source, you can pick all your different MIDI numbers here from what, 0 to 127 and you can map these like from your keyboard your midi keyboard or whatnot to a certain destination on the entire synth that or i guess this list shows you so you can map maybe like a certain key to a certain parameter and you can change the amount here that it affects it so you can get really really in depth with programming the synth to the gear that you have externally and really using it to its max potential not too complicated uh, in this section, but it's a very, very cool feature if you really want to customize your own gear to the synthesizer itself. So that basically wraps up this video here. Uh, hopefully you learned something. And as, as always, if there's any questions you have, please let me know in the comments. And maybe if I skipped over something or didn't talk about something enough, please let me know. And I'll try to revisit that topic at some point. And uh, for our next video, we're going to be talking about the effects section, which has a lot of cool stuff as well. So I hope to see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.